Hi everybody and welcome to A Culinary Journey, which should prove to be one of my most interesting shows to date. We are going to make mozzarella and I am going to actually have two guests who are here all the time. You just don't get to meet them. It's Piner and Sam. I'll tell you all about them in a couple of minutes and what they do for our show. And we're going to be making mozzarella. I get it asked all the time. Hey, how do you make mozzarella? Well, I'm going to show you today. We're going to make three items. We're going to do a bocconcini salad, which is a little bite-sized mozzarella in a salad. We're going to be doing insalata caprese, mozzarella and tomato salad. And we're going to be doing a panzanella salad, which is old bread and mozzarella tomato salad. So we're going to do different versions, have a lot of fun, get those fresh ingredients from the garden going. And we have Piner and Sam. You'll meet them later when our culinary journey starts now. Hi, I'm Luca Paris, and welcome back to A Culinary Journey. I'm here with Sam and Piner. You might not see them very often, but they are essential to this show. And that's why I had them on today, and because I had no other guests, and they were here. No, they are essential to the show because they're the ones that get everything ready on the show, and nothing can happen without them. So, Sam, Piner, how you doing? Good. Great. Excited? Yeah. You're going to get to be guests. You don't have to do too much work except yeah. drink wine and cut curd. That's tough. That's a tough world. I know. Yeah, no. <laughs> well, what we're going to be making today is insalata caprese, panzanella salad, and bocconcini, which are just fancy ways of saying we're going to have a whole lot of mozzarella going on. And we're going to show you how to make mozzarella. Now, the first thing we need to do is, guys, you have to cut up the curd. All right? You need a knife, I take it. There's one for you. And, Piner, you get a little bit bigger knife. There you go. Thank you, Chef. One for you. Just start cutting it up into pieces. Small, the smaller the pieces, the better. Thank you. And what, what they're working on is what is basically it. It's curd. It's a separation of curds and whey. We all know our fairy tales and our mother goose or whatever that is. And what the separation between curds and whey is, is they add fresh milk. They add a rennet to it or a chemical or an enzyme that separates the curd. It drops to the bottom and the whey goes to the top. The whey is then taken off and then cooked and it's made into ricotta. It can be do, done as a ricotta or farmer's cheese. And then the curd is the building block for all, all cheeses. You can, from this, you doing okay there, guys? Yep. Great. All right. From this, we can make any type of cheese possible based on what we add to it and how long it's preserved and the type of milk we're using. So let's get all of that in there and we're going to get started with this. It's really simple. It's very little of a recipe that we're going to show you here. That's why we're going to do these couple of salads to go along with it. And what we're going to do is add the mozzarella, the curd, to some salt and some water, and then hopefully create an amazing mozzarella. Now let's go. How are we doing? You're pretty fast at this. Now the two of you have been working on the show since we started, right? Yep. And they've been setting up all the shots that you see. Whenever there's food on the table, they prepare everything and have it all ready for me. And Sam makes sure she picks out my shirts, too, from mm -hmm. time to time. Yeah, and she picked out Piner's today, also. Yeah. <laughs> she actually did. <laughs> she did. And it happened to be yours. And yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> all right. All right, so we have here our first ingredient, which is the curd. Pretty easy, right? Our second ingredient is just a pinch of salt. Just a pinch, which usually scares everybody. At this point, this is where everyone's gasping for air, thinking about how much salt I put in. But you'd be amazed at how much the salt just gets into the water and just flavors the curd as opposed to making it super salty. And then we have boiling water at about uh, a little less than boiling. I, I got it to a boil and then cooked it down a little bit to about 180 degrees. I mean, uh, cooled it off a little bit to about 180 degrees. And we're going to just let that work out. So have you, either one of you ever made mozzarella before? No. No? no? It's really simple. And it's... The easiest part is putting your hands in here. So once you put your hand, not a problem. Ow. No, it's not that bad. 
Now what I'm using for salt is kosher, kosher salt. You could use sea salt or kosher salt. Iodized salt is too fine. If you put the amount of iodized salt that I put kosher salt in, all you would taste would be the salt. Here we're just adding flavor to uh, our curd. And that's, that's basically it. These are the ingredients. Uh, I learned this uh, about 20 something years ago now uh, when I opened up my first place in New York and the gentleman who taught me this, he was well, at 75, 80, I was buying his store and the one thing he said to me, all in Italian, is that I'm going to teach you how to make mozzarella and if you learn it, I won't bother you. If you do, and I was this hothead out of school and I told him, I said, oh please, just give me the recipe, I'll do anything. And he laughed at me and threw a mozzarella at me and yelled and whatever. But the first month it took me, I could not make mozzarella to save my life. I kept doing it wrong. He was very upset. And he wouldn't leave the store. Even though I had bought it already, he wouldn't leave the store until I learned how to make it. So quickly I learned how to make it to get rid of him. So working it's important then. It's the, the, biggest, the biggest thing is if you work it too much, yeah. you're going to make string cheese. It'll get really stringy. Mm -hmm. If you overcook it, it'll be stringy. If you undercook it, it'll just still be that curd, and it, and it just doesn't have the right texture. To get it right in the middle is about, it's more of an art form than it is a, uh, it's more of an art form than it is a science. We're not really cooking sure. or creating art. It's like making bread dough sometimes. You know how some bread doughs, oh, yeah. if you work them too much or work them too little. So now what looked like tofu to start off with starts melting down in the, wa in the water. You see how it's like just starting to get this nice consistency? Yeah. In the old time delis in New York, what they used to have is these big vats of hot, hot water and they'd have specific, um, specific plumbing just for the mozzarella. And they have big wooden handles and they start stirring and stirring and then reach out and pull this beautiful mozzarella out. It's just amazing to watch some of the older places, older Salumeria in New York. Mm -hmm. All right, we're getting to a point where I could actually make this work. So what I'm going to do with this is drain out some of the water. Now there are many, uh, try talking doing this at the same time, that's a lot of fun. There are many websites out there you could go to who have little packages on how to make fresh cheese. They'll actually get you to make your mozzarella straight from milk and they'll give you the, the rennet and then it'll be able to uh, separate the curd out of the milk and it's pretty amazing to do. But if you can find curd that's for sale, you can make your own in about half the amount of time. So it just took us a, almost no time to get it down. Now it's going to get to the point where I'm going to fold it, again, like pizza dough. And Sam, you're, you're a pastry chef. You know what it's like when you work with either a puff pastry dough or a pie, a pie dough. You have to be really careful of not overworking it, right? right? Yeah. And that's the same exact thing we're doing here. I'm just gently kind of folding over and over. And what we have here is we start with our log of mozzarella. And then we make our fresh mozzarella. It's pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Now I don't have to make it anymore. I showed you once, right? The yeah. two of you are right. going to make it forever for now for me? Yeah, just let me. OK. <laughs> it's one of those things I keep to myself for a while. <laughs> it takes a lot, of, a lot of time for me to feel comfortable with other people making the mozzarella. But once you make it, once you've made your own, it's so much better mm -hmm. than buying the store-bought brand. There you go. Nice yep. and round. And then we're going to make some bocconcini. Now with the bocconcini, this is where I have to work quickly. I need to make sure I don't let it overcook. But at the same time, as it cools off, it's harder to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of water back in. Ta -da. How's the wine, guys? Hey. Delicious. You enjoying it? And you yes. save the water, too, from the curd to the... Right, I don't, I don't get rid of it right away. It's actually, it's, it's great to even boil pasta in there if you, I mean, that's great, mm. you know, it's got milk, it's got all that. That's what the water, why it's turned so white, is because of the milk that's come out of it. And these are the bocconcini, see, look at that. Yeah. Make little knots. Bocconcini means bite size or for a little mouth. And this you could just pretty much pop one in your mouth, one or two bites, it's in there. There's a couple of different ways you've seen. If you go to stores, you'll see it's also called ciliegini, which are like cherries, which in Italian translates to cherries, but it looks more like this. Like you saw the ball I made, right? Mm -hmm. Then you make a little one, and you can do little mini mozzarella balls. 
<laughs> all right? And my favorite, last one, last but not least, is the, the braid. Again, just like bread, it's very similar to making breads. If you were making rolls or breads, again, get it working just enough. Whew, this was a hot first segment. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> And it only gets better from here, because then we get to eat the mozzarella. But finally, our little braid. Ta-da. Sounds good? Looks good? Is that a good yep. braid? Great. All right. So we have mozzarella. We did it all in our first segment. We have mozzarella. Now we're going to take some fresh garden tomatoes from Piner's garden, right? Yep. We're going to take some tomatoes from his garden. We have some basil from his garden. And we're going to be making some great salads. So don't go away. We'll be right back. That sounds good, doesn't it? <laughs> hey everybody, welcome back. We're on our culinary journey and we're making mozzarella. So in our first segment, we actually made the mozzarella. You guys behaving over there? Yeah. Yes. They're having too much fun. <laughs> I'm here with Sam and Piner. That's Sam, that's Piner. And we're with them and we're making, now we're gonna do our insalata caprese, our panzanella salad, and our bocconcini salad. So we're gonna first start with our panzanella salad. And this one's really easy. It's, it's actually what's called an old bread salad in Italy. Uh, panzanella where you would take some, let's say basil, fresh tomatoes from the garden, a little bit of garlic and, and some, maybe some shallots, extra virgin olive oil and mozzarella and toss this all together and serve it with a salad. Now we don't have any old bread with us but what we're going to do is compensate by that by cr creating some grilled bread or seared bread. So we're going to take a pan, get on medium heat, put some olive oil in the pan and then we're going to put some nice seasoned bread in there. We're going to take some ciabatta bread. We'll get it seasoned, and we'll get that all nice flavor in there. We'll just let it sear in the pan. So, how is watching mozzarella being made? Pretty simple? Yep. Yes. Something that could be done easy at home now? Yep. If I can find curd at the store. Oh, that's good, good can question. Can you? Uh, you can. I mean, it's something at specialty stores or maybe online you could find. So, it's, they're, they're available, so you can find them out there if you really look for it. And then places that make mozzarella might actually have curd if somebody wants. So it's, it's available out there. In this other pan for our caprese salad later, what we're gonna do, so I'm gonna turn this down, is make a balsamic glaze. So we're gonna get some balsamic vinegar in here. Let's turn that down, get some balsamic vinegar in here and let it cook down. Now this is something if you're doing at home, make sure it's in a really well ventilated area, keep it on low and let it cook down. Now the balsamic vinegar, comes in a lot of different varieties. You get these vinegars out there that are hundreds of dollars and almost like an aperitif or a cordial that are so incredible in flavor. It's sweet, but they're years old, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, even 100 years old, and you really can't afford them to put them on your mozzarella. You could get close to that same feel by cooking them down just a little bit and then adding some brown sugar or honey on, into that and you'll, you'll love the way this balsamic glaze comes out. So we're preparing it for there. We're getting our breads going. Make sure that's on. And let's cut up our panzanella salad. So, are these yours, Piner? Yes. All right. Yep. These are tomatoes so from your garden. garden. So you yep. grow your own tomatoes and yep. stuff? Yep, absolutely. How long have you been doing a garden for? Uh, I grew up doing it, and then uh, I think I started in May now awesome. for that garden. And they look great. Yeah. There's nothing like fresh tomatoes from the garden. Oh, no, absolutely when you get it at that time of the year. Yep. So we'll just cut these all up. Really not much to do to these. You don't want to, you don't want to play with uh, the tomatoes too much because they have all the natural flavor in them. They came right off of the, the plants and they don't get refrigerated so they have some great, uh, you don't lose any of the flavor which mm -hmm. is awesome. If you do get them off season, if you need to make tomatoes off season, how about I take that away? If you get tomatoes off season, it's really nice to take them and to grill them a little bit or cook them down a little bit so you get some their natural juices coming out. Let's do another one. We have a lot of people watching. So what's the toughest thing about having your own garden? Watering. Watering. <laughs> <laughs> Especially now in the late season. Cause, cause it was you, raining through July and June right. and now it's all dry. So, so now you here I keep am up in August and yep, I have to wake up every morning and water. Do you, so do you, do you tend to lose stuff if you don't keep on top of it? Um, yeah, I would say that's right. Uh, the leaves go the worst and then... So all the mixed greens and yep. things like that yep. all get destroyed? Yep. So you got to really keep on top of it. I mean, you can see that just with someone's lawn out there these days. Yep, absolutely. They're getting brown now. So here we are with our balsamic. Let's jump back to that. We'll put some brown sugar. 
which was Sam's idea, because I usually like to use honey. Sam said, let's try it with a little brown sugar. It has the same effect, and it's going to sweeten it up. It's, it's got a nice acidity to it and a nice little bite, but we want to sweeten it up just so we level the playing field. We're going to get almost like a glaze or a syrup. All right, so fresh basil, once again, from, from Piner's Place. It should be the name of your garden, Piner's Place. Mm, it could be. <laughs> I'll put a sign up. Okay. <laughs> and this, we do them just like ribbons. What's that called, Sam? You remember? Chiffonade. Chiffonade. Very good. See, that's because I forget things. I have them tell me from the side. Some fresh garlic. Is that bread <laughs> pan on? Yeah. Is the flame on under there? Oh, yeah. Oh, I couldn't see it. Oh, there it goes. From here. I have it on a medium low because I just okay. want to toast them up. I really don't want to sear them all that heavy. I just want to get this nice little almost hard crispiness to it and without too much color. So let's get a set of tongs. So keep it on. See, you do, you're still working, right? You're still making sure <laughs> I'm doing everything right because you're checking on me. And that's awesome. Shows like this don't happen by yourself. I mean, you, are, you probably know this is going to be, we have four or five people that are just manning cameras and working the editing and, and going back and forth. But on our end, there's a lot of work, just even the day before prep and even up to two days before and the day of the show, we're running around, okay, not we. When I say we, I mean they. <laughs> they're running around, and they're getting everything ready and asking me questions. And I go, whatever you bring, that's fine. And I, and I told Sam we're going to do a challenge show that they're going to make up about whatever. They're going to say, okay, here are all the ingredients, Luca, and you're going to have to work with it. And that should be fun, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. For you, maybe. I'm excited. I so. Yeah, I'm not that excited about <laughs> it. I was thinking we should do an Iron Chef show. Okay. You should bring should. somebody else on and, and Iron Chef them. Uh, I would do it in a heartbeat. Okay. We could. Do you have any, anybody that wants to do it? Well, I was thinking some of the people from the restaurant. I could do that in a heartbeat. Wouldn't you love that? I would love to actually go up against Chef Allen. How's that? Let's Ooh. Do it. He's, he's one agree. of the best cooks yeah. I know in this town. Yeah. Best chefs in this town. So we put some shallots, some tomato. And I would lose to him in a heartbeat and not worry about it. No, nah, man. It's all in your head. No, that's why I'm going to win, but that's the whole other thing. <laughs> <laughs> and how about some greens? Pino, we have any greens anywhere in this place? Yeah, we do. We actually have some to your upper left right next to the stove. Really? Here? Some parsley in here? Yeah. I was looking for other stuff. See, you know, when you're, when you're not back there, I don't have anything over here. But we'll, let's do some parsley you want with mixed? the basil. We do have mixed greens. No, nah, that's good. We're good with like that. That's going to be a beautiful thing. Let's get one of these balls of mozzarella that we had going on before. Look at that. These breads are coming together nicely. Don't try that at home, folks. You want to use tongs, right? <laughs> Not every day you get to just stick your hands in a hot pan. And, well, you know, oh, he knows where to go. So what do you think about this set, guys? Would you love a kitchen like this at home? Yep. Since you're both... I absolutely yes. would. Cooks in your own right, and you like it. Here you go. Thank you. Piece of mozzarella. Oh, he's not there. Here, I'll you get to have his, too. There you go. <laughs> All right. Let's cut up the mozzarella and get it into the salad. No mixed greens. That's okay. We don't need them. It's Real just bad. like being at home. We're going to make it happen with what we have. And then we're going to get the bread out of here, and we're going to cut that up, and that's going to get us our panzanella salad and just some good, 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 oh, this is going to be good stuff. Nice crispy bread. The warm bread is going to mix in with those tomatoes. And really, really, look at that color. Wait, let me stuff that moving around. Look at that color. It's, it's beautiful. It's like a, basically like a Christmas tree. All these great Italian flag colors going on here. And then that, it's a great appetizer. It's the summertime. You have your, your fresh tomatoes, right? You have some mm. nice old. And if you have day old bread, that's, I mean, that's the original recipe. Some day old bread and some... Um, some day old bread and some mozzarella. And you can even have day old mozzarella too, because the bread, you warm it up just a little bit and put it on there. And let's give it a, another level of color. We'll just drizzle right around the outside. Well, drizzle might be a, a, a phrase for it, but there you go. Let's do a little balsamic. And that's our first dish. When we come back, we are going to put together insalata caprese with those tomatoes. And that's going to be absolutely wonderful. And the bocconcini salad, kind of the same concept, just different ways of doing it. Don't go away. They're going to eat. I'm going to finish cooking. We'll be right back. Thank you, Take Chef. Bye. Welcome. Hey, guys, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to A Culinary Journey. We're having a great time here. 
and they're eating all the mm. panzanella salad. Yep. We're trying. Do you think anyway. you get enough of this? It's the tomatoes no. that make it. That it's really delicious. makes a big it's difference so too. Fresh tomatoes from the garden, fresh basil, great way to go. Delicious. All right, so we have a couple more things, just variations on the theme, right? Mm -hmm. well, I made the bocconcini earlier. That's what we have here. I'm going to cut up some of the, the the cherry tomatoes that you had. I'm just going to throw those in real quick. See how quick this this one goes. It's the same concept as a salad, and you could use roasted peppers in here too, if you like. And we're going to give it just a little bit of spice. We're going to use a little cayenne just for spice. Good amount of garlic, a lot of garlic. We want to do a lot of garlic in yeah. this one, just like we did a lot of salt. And that, that comes to, back to what we were talking about before. Is the mozzarella really salty? No, no. delicious. Right. It's, Perfect. It's, it's got, I mean, we put so much salt in that mixture that it looked like it was going to be overly salty, but it wasn't. It's just got enough flavor. Yeah. The water itself is already is pretty salty, but that kind of goes away after a while. I'm going to add some. And that comes with using kosher, not iodized. Correct. Yeah. You're very good. You've been listening to the show. Yeah, I tried. That's good to know. <laughs> and we're going to add some herbs to this also. How's that? Let's get some basil. I think we used up all your basil, but that's OK. And this one I like to have a lot of fresh herbs in. We have some basil and parsley. And you know, I'm usually a guy that always says, always get that flat leaf parsley. And, but, you know, if I have fresh curly parsley from, from a garden, I don't care what kind I'm using no, as long as yeah, And this has got a little bit of spice, a lot of garlic. And that's how quick that one is, all right? So that's going to go here. Nice little bocconcini salad with a lot of fresh herbs. You could do any type of herbs you like on there. And that's a nice little salad for that. And then the traditional insalata caprese, which, we, which we've heard about in the past, which is a fresh mozzarella and tomato salad. And that's a great thing to make too. Just make a couple of layers of tomatoes and mozzarella. Now, when you're making the mozz or when you're making a salad like this, or you make your own homemade mozzarella, one of the things you never want to do is put the mozzarella in the refrigerator. Once you do, it changes the texture, the flavor, the complexity of it to where it starts drying out. And once it starts drying out, you have a whole different feel to it. It's great for cooking. Uh, it's great for making sandwiches. But the insalata caprese part definitely loses its flavor or it loses its attraction a little bit when it's a little colder. If you do put it in the refrigerator, one of the best things to do is take it out, put it in some lukewarm water, let it sit for about half hour, and it'll come back to life as much as possible. There we go. Fresh tomato. Can't go wrong with that. A little olive oil along the thing, along the side. A little salt and pepper. And it looks like uh, we've done it. What do you think, guys? You having a good time? Yes. Oh, yes. I want to thank you both for all the help you put into the show. Without you, it's tough to do any of this. And you know the, the help you put all over from behind the scenes to setting up to cleaning up. I'm sure the guys here at Midnight Nut Flooring appreciate the cleanup especially. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. Because if they saw what the floor looks like behind here, they'd know the mess. So with that. Enjoy your caprese, your bocconcini salad, and you've already enjoyed the panzanella. Yes, delicious. That's what it's all about on our culinary journey. These are my two pilots on the culinary journey. And you guys having fun? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. you're like holding hands down yeah, there and everything. We do. We're a very close-knit group on this oh. show. <laughs> Thank you both so much. And we'll see you next time on a culinary journey. Okay. <laughs>